He's one of I the most saw... talented individuals I've ever met. Little Wednesday from TV's The Addams Family is all grown up and married to a porn star. We had an agreement that he would not, absolutely not continue doing porno movies. I found out about eight months after we were married that he'd been doing them behind my back. It wasn't easy just learning how to give myself to one particular person. Would you encourage your own wife to become a topless dancer? I've known dancers for years and have a lot of respect for their hard work and also they make a lot of money. I was in the middle of a set. He came up, he threw on the stage $10,000 in cash. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the program. Here's the question. What must it be like to be married to someone who takes their clothes off for a living? Just ask our guests, including Lisa Loring. Now, you may remember Lisa from the original Adams Family television series in which she played Wednesday. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? Quite a long time ago. Quite a long time ago. Since then, Lisa hasn't had too much luck in uh, show business. In fact, she got some controversial even bad publicity recently due to some personal problems but maybe just maybe some of lisa's troubles stem from the fact that her husband has such an unusual occupation she's married to the gentleman who sits alongside her his name is jerry butler jerry has appeared in over 600 x-rated adult films he's so expert at it that he's even written this book it's called raw talent the adult film industry as seen by its most popular male star. Uh, he may have been the most popular male star when he wrote it, but as a result of writing it, we are told that Jerry has been blacklisted in much of the adult film community because he exposed what he says is the dirty and sleazy business uh, that he's involved in, this business of porn movies. Jerry, is the mob involved? <laughs> you know, you know, believe it or not, when we got married in Vegas, right? Remember we were watching his your special on the on porn, and I learned I learned more about the business from you, from that from that documentary that we saw in Vegas. Well, actually, I think you did it in New York or something like that. You were on the scenes of a movie and you did a lot of research. I assume there is involvement all and everywhere in life, but I don't know them. They know me, but um, I hope they're involved for one sake because I'm getting death threats from one particular guy. We'll talk about it later, you know, and I. What I, later? I this is later. Well, what? all right. Well, I thought, well you know, it's, it's, it's a whole complicated thing. I did a movie with Kelly Van Dyke, who is the daughter of Jerry Van Dyke. And, um, she committed suicide. She committed suicide, and Lisa When's and I were very much last a Last November or so. Right. And we were very much a part yeah, of I what happened. Her. She found her dead. I did a, mil um, a film with her. She was doing a lot of drugs, and I was keeping watch of her and everything. We went over to the house together, and then this one particular guy named Brandy... And when he sees this, he's going to get infuriated. He's going to give me some more threatening calls. And I'm willing to challenge him, except the problem is I don't know where the hell he is. He told a lot of lies. He exploited her death. He sold a bachelor party that she'd done a strip tease at. He really exploited and made something like $25,000, $25,000 off of her death. Now, the whole thing is this and guy... And made up lies and rumors about a... us because now... of my name and who I am. This one particular guy, his name was Brandy. I didn't like the guy there because she was very unstable, and I said, just let the guy go. Now, what were the threats? Specific? Well, I'm getting death threats with the guy as far as uh, He's life He was going to me. He was going to kill us deaths. and my child. Hmm. I didn't know you two had a kid. No, no, stepchild. My, she has a child. My little girl who's... He was yeah. on Current Affairs a couple of, a couple of, about a month ago, and actually admitted to having... Oh, you know, he admitted to the detectives and, yeah. that he threatened our lives, too. Okay, Lisa, yeah. let me just stick on this, let, because we're jumping all over the place. I told Here, you. Here, Kelly... Van Dyke. You become a friend for 48 hours. Right. There's the spatula party, bizarre scene. Somehow you end up there after the party is well, over. Well, what had happened is she done a strip drugs. tease. She done a strip tease with another girl at a bachelor party. Right. They come home. She calls us. It's Friday. It's one in the morning. Right. Paul, Lisa, can you come over? Can you, you know, can you guys come over? I don't feel right. My friend left. There's still a lot of these guys here from the bachelor party that I did mm -hmm. earlier tonight. I feel real shaky. She sounded like she'd been drinking and, and yeah. other things. And I said to Paul, let's go. Let's yeah. go and see, make sure she's all right. And this more time is it? And I didn't really know her except talking with her over the phone until then. Okay, did you stay with her then through the hours up to her death? Yes, I did. Where was Kelly? How did you find her? You all right, we stayed the weekend, the okay? okay? Yeah. Now, like he was saying, at 6 in the morning, we got into an argument. Mm -hmm. Because Domestic he dispute. wanted to, let me finish, he wanted to go home, okay? Because of this guy, Brandy, who was there, he didn't feel comfortable with him around. I said, no, we're not going to leave Kelly alone by herself with this guy, even though he seemed to be all right. But Paul didn't like him at all. Yeah. Well, I was Jerry. even willing to take Kelly he, back with us, but this guy had no right. He lived in Palmdale, which is a way right. out of area from where we were. So we had a, a verbal argument, yelling and screaming. Big one. Kelly was very messed up. 
not in her, not coherent, not in her right mind. She thought he was, because he had grabbed me by the arms at one point. He thought, she thought he was attacking me. She called the police. She thought Jerry, your uh, husband, right, was attacking right. She right. called the police. Right. When the police got there, they put Brandy, Kelly, and I all in separate rooms nine and took him outside. Nine squad cars. Nine squad cars. Nine Brandy of them. Brandy and Kelly told them that he had hit me eight to nine times and a couple of times with his fist in the face. Mm -hmm. I had not a mark on my face. Thank you. I told okay. them, please, he's, don't take him. He had he had Let's get to Kelly's problem. We'll okay. get to your problems later. This is, this is the problem. They took him away to jail. I stayed with her. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to say one As thing. Very important. Very important. When I talk, when I got into the squad, don't car, you get an idea of what their life is like? Oh, on it's, 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 a, it's a heaven and hell. And you know, and when I got, I went into the squad car, I simply six hundred porno films. What I must say, one a day? Huh? <laughs> Are you kidding? I got more. I got more cows in my, in my hips than old Jewish men in a bingo hall. I mean, it's, yeah, prop, it's pa calcium deposits, you know. But anyway, I told you get the police more calluses on his hips than Jewish men in a bingo hall. No, no, hall. calcium, calcium, oh, calcium. Yeah. Oh my God. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now I break hips. I'm getting old. I'm half Jewish. <laughs> you know something, Geraldo? I told the police woman and the and insane, I, by the way. I, it sounds like it's quite a couple, all things considered. <laughs> yeah, you, but you go home with this. Where insane. was Kelly when you found her? I Lisa. told the police woman, the policeman, okay. that, that you, they, you went that, to jail. We know. No, no, no. I want to say one thing. It's very important. I told them to take Kelly away because I said this woman is going yeah, to die. He warned them. I he told said, them this. You better take care I of that girl them in there because they didn't give me any blood tests for alcohol, drugs, nothing. They just took me away, and I said, go in there and take that woman and take. Her. And they said, don't worry, we'll take her away now. You Okay, I stayed with her. He was gone to jail. Her husband was gone. She said, Lisa, please don't leave me. You're the only person in so long who I can talk to who understands what I'm saying without another word. She was a child actress. I was. Both parents. My mother was an alcoholic. Her father was an alcoholic. So we had a real rapport, even though we knew each other for such a short time. I said, Kelly, I'll stay with you. Okay, Saturday goes by. Sunday morning. Sunday was the first what day. What show is Jerry Van Dyke on? Coach? Is that Coach is the coach, coach right, yeah, whatever. Right. Sunday was the first day I saw her or had even talked to her where she was not, where she was coherent. Stop. Right. Was okay. not. Okay. She'd cut her foot the night before, went to the emergency hospital with a friend, oh got it God. stitched up. I came back. I, ca I took this guy, Brandy, home to Palmdale. Right. I came back. She was fine. She was on the phone with her husband, Jack, because she was going to move in with me, move out. He wanted a divorce. Something had happened. They had some argument. I said, are you sure? Why don't you wait till he comes back? On the phone, I heard her say, all right, I'll wait till you come back. Maybe we can talk it out. I leave to go to the pharmacy. And to get us a pizza, we're just going to watch movies. I come back. She'd given me the bottom key. I open the door, walk in. Kelly put my stuff down, look down the hallway to the bedroom, and there she is hanging from a light fixture. She had a good sense of humor, as screwed up as she was, and she was a wonderful, lovely girl, as messed up emotionally as she was. And one of her foot was still sort of touching the chair. And I thought, I turned away, and I thought for a minute, this is a sick joke. I turned back around, I was going to say, come on, knock it off. That's when I saw the saliva dripping from her mouth and her nose, and I freaked. I couldn't look anymore. I ran outside, screamed for help. A few people came, cut her down. They worked on her for about 45 mm -hmm. minutes, but they couldn't. They couldn't. After the her. suicide, and it came in the paper and everything, and I spoke to my my public defender and everything, they just dropped the case. All right. Obviously, Jerry and Lisa are just exactly. filled with stories to tell us, uh, and we will delve much more deeply into the effect that Jerry's career has had on Lisa. How, how even how they met. That was an unusual story. I want to Very get to. It. Let me just introduce our other guests before we go too much further. Uh, also joining us, Susan and Jean. Now, Susan, there on your uh, left, poses uh, nude for Penthouse magazine for a living. Uh, her husband, Jean, says that... Uh, do you really mean, Jean, that it's a turn-on to you? Sure, absolutely. It, it is to see her in those uh, various positions? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Even with other fellows? Uh, well, she did that once before I met her. I, it wasn't so bad. No, I didn't, I didn't mind seeing that. I think I might object if she did it now while we were married, but uh, it didn't bother me looking at the pictures what, before. What about her films? Do you ever watch her films? She does movies? Yeah, not your kind of movies, though. Okay. Oh. Not that same kind. <laughs> I was going to trade you maybe after the show, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you do... <laughs> Six, 65 of mine for one of yours, you know. <laughs> What do you get paid for your movies? Two hundred bucks or something like that. <laughs> Some companies are real chiselly and cheap about what they pay. It's basically two fifty a scene, but not compared to what I used to get five hundred six a day. Two hundred fifty dollars for a movie? For a scene. A scene. Well, basically, you do one scene a day, and possibly two. And if you do more than two, you you, know, you got to stick with the five. It's just not the same. There's a recession. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know. This, how does Clinton feel about pornography? Wait a second.
But you are you, are you talking it. physical or are you talking financial? What? Do you have a physical recession or? Uh... Oh, I'm both. I'm both. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm both. I, I need a walker. I got a walker. You right. need a walker now. All right. Paige, uh, call her Paige behind those Foster Grants. Paige, would you stand up? You have a fabulous outfit on, but I, I think you're wearing some. My jacket is it? Whose jacket? Is no, it? it's mine. Your own. All right, no. let's uh, see what you wore yeah, I'm to the hooked party. Up. This is one of her outfits. Why? Well, well. Okay. Button, button up, darling. Mm. Paige is, as you may have uh, discerned, a topless dancer. Jay, her husband, got her in the business. Is that right, Jay? You actually yeah. got her in the business? Yeah. Actually, yeah. Helped her choose going into the business as opposed to working where she was for basically slave wages in an industry she really wanted to be in, but was dominated by, uh, you know, male industry, the design and fashion industry. So rather than working 8 to 12 hours a day for next to nothing, I suggested that she might try out uh, dancing. Now, Because least... I've, I've known dancers for years and a lot of respect for their hard work and also they make a lot of money and they deserve the money they make. I mean, Unless they're doing you think better that than she's a dumb are, blonde. Uh, I know, I should be tap dancing, right? With <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. the G string. Really? Just Without said, a really? musical recession. For what you just said, maybe you should because I make more money dancing <laughs> than you, you do doing really things. Well, so, Paige, uh, now you're not a dumb blonde. You have a, quite an educational background. I'm not a dumb blonde background. at all. I've got a, a bachelor's in fine arts and I'm going for my master's now and an associate's in economics. I do want to start my own company as a designer. Do, do any of your classmates know what you do at night? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but we keep that on a low profile. We don't want it to interfere yeah, with the schoolwork. Yeah, it's not something you advertise. Because otherwise, you know, it starts being a, you know, <laughs> You know, I like to say thing. something. Teachers tend to object. I like to say something. I'd like to know why the American public and society as it is makes such a big deal out of topless dancing, strip-teasing, pornography, when Europe and the European countries have such a totally different Well, that's different the view. question today, when what your spouse is an exhibitionist. That's no porn star, that's my husband, the focus of this edition of Heraldo. When your spouse is an exhibitionist, that's no porn star, that's my husband. Yes, yes. I'd, like to, I'd like to respond to Paige and Lisa's questions about why society makes a big deal about this. We have three women in this society, Anita Hill, Patricia Bowman, and Desiree Washington, who were just made spectacle of because people did not want to believe them. And women like you two who do stuff like this help feed on men's chauvinism. Okay, can I say and something? that's why. I believe that. Yeah, you Before you sit down, tell me how. Because it just feeds into men's... It feeds uh, into men's what? I mean, you know, you gotta back about this up. women like you and about a way women are supposed Grace, to did be. Did you see Cape Fear? I saw it There's last night at the hotel. There's nothing about women are supposed Robert to be. Robert De Niro's kissing a 16 year old little girl. Exactly. Well, I mean, vice I'm people blowing people up and showing cocaine. I mean, I think there's more violence and sexual right. uh, it's a more persuasion outlet than somebody going up and picking a hooker up on the street or guys going into bars just for one night stands. I wear the same thing Vegas showgirls wear. I present the statement the gentleman made in the middle. You said you didn't want your wife working for low wages. Mm. What do you consider low wages? And I want to know what you do for a living. That I'm you must be having a good job. I'm an illustrator. Okay, but what do you? Right. You're an illustrator for uh, Hustler uh, magazine. I do a lot of work for Hustler magazine as well. So you, as... so you freeload. So that, that's how you talked her into what she's doing then. No, I no, suggested it. She check it out. I knew. Okay, yeah. and one more question. I noticed the females have wedding rings on. I noticed you don't have one. Are you two married, I, living I, together? Believe it or not, I. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I'd like to oh, listen. Listen, listen, I'm not, listen. My money. I'm, I wrote a book about it. It's not an easy life. Like I said, I'm here to tell the truth. We were very, very down and out, and I honked it one day. No, no, no. How you like you that? You threw it into the street when we had an argument. I honked it. I honked it. <laughs> and out of the six years, it's of Van Nuys any of you take drugs? Out of the six years, alcohol. I, Neither one of you two take well, drugs. I asked, I have, but no longer. That Lisa was when I was a kid. Yes. Not anymore. We know about. But well, we try a lot. Yeah. What? Didn't Lisa try to commit suicide or something because of his no work? Hold it. Now, hold it. Stop. Stop. Lisa, yes. isn't it a fact that you attempted to take your own life? Yes. How did you do that? Yeah. See, I'll be honest about anything you ask okay. me. How did you do that? What did you do? Actually, if I had wanted to do it, I would have really done it. It was more, at that moment, everything had come to such a head. I was under such emotional pain. It wasn't a legitimate attempt, because like I said, if I'd wanted to, I would have done it. It was a stupid thing to do. What did you do? How did you try? What I did was, it was a cry for help to my family Stop and my Stop telling husband. us what it was and tell us right. what it, but that's what did. it was, and that's what I did. 
But to what say, did hey, you look do? what could happen if I wanted insulin, to. Insulin, insulin. You shot insulin. yourself up with insulin? I had a friend there who had, was a diabetic. She had insulin. She had a syringe. I took it, I filled it up, emptied half of it out, emptied more of it out to say because of how I was not being understood and treated right by family, did, by did, friends, by... Did your body go into a coma? No, 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 no. no. It was so little. My body it went to a coma it, when, I, when she told me so about it. It was so little, it wasn't enough Believe to do not. anything. And it was she a was really fine. stupid thing. I it was, was attention. It, it was for attention. It was emotional pain that made me snap at that was, precise moment. Is some of your pain the result again. of what your husband does for a living? Yes. Yes. Well, tell us about that. Well, I'll put it this way to you. When we first met and began our relationship, we had an agreement that he would not absolutely not continue doing porno movies. I'm a very monogamous person. I am not promiscuous. I do not believe in it. I didn't judge him for what he did, but if we were to carry on this relationship, I would not remain with him if he continued to act in the adult business and have sex with other women. He agreed. He said, do this book with me. I've always wanted to do this, a way of cleansing himself. I found out about eight months after we were married, six, eight months is about a year and a half after we were together, that he'd been doing them behind my back, and I left him. And you know something? She's right. She's right. I thought I was going to be able to just say, oh, I love you, I do, and get out. It's very tough. The adult How business, do you do a porno adult movie business. behind your back? What do you say? You go to the Kmart and you go to no. this? I was saying I was doing other things. No, he, I was yeah. doing legit roles in the movies, cameo roles, he's, everything else. He's, he's a very talented actor and he's a very good liar and he can disguise anything. No, and I'm, I'm not, not stupid, <laughs> but, but he fooled me. Um, my question's for Lisa, and it's that um, being that your husband has had sex with so many women, do you sometimes feel that maybe when you're having sex that... Uh, you have to compare, like you're being compared to other oh, women? Oh, God, when I first met him. Not anymore. Yes, I went, gee, I wonder, I mean, I have no insecurities, but <laughs> I wonder if I'll measure up, look at what this man has done and who he's been with. And then, you know what, mention but, that... Uh, the love over, overcame any of that. And you know you something? Know. I once was with my wife making love to her, and I told her, I said, you got to be patient with me because I'm just learning how to make love again. And this was after seven years of making movies. I, I'm not a big shot. I'm not no big shot. I, mean, I'm an, I became an established victim of my own circumstance, my own, my own works. I'm saying it's, it, it, you know, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, um, just sort of adversity and, and a bit of um, hardship. But uh, I, became, uh, I became very uh, jaded to myself. I became mechanical. And, I, and uh, it wasn't easy just learning how to give myself to one particular person. Although when I did... If you don't do porn everything. movies, what can you do for a living? What skills do you have? I could tell jokes. <laughs> Yeah. My, yeah. my, yeah. Think of a good one. I want to go yeah, with a Susan right now. Hold it. All right. oh, Susan and Jean. Let me go to Jean. You look so uh, so prim and proper in your way. Uh, uh, what do you do for a living? I'm the president of a television company. We make commercials and shows and rock videos and things like that. You know, what most uh, most guys in in Western civilization they they like to think of their you know particularly if they're monogamous they like to think that their mate is also monogamous and that there are something sacred and private. I mean you must be bothered by the fact that so many of her pictures are circulating and that these films are out there and her last thing when we, you just did penthouse with another what was it, it was a fantasy thing with a couple of women was it? It was one woman. Yeah. Okay. What is she? It's not out yet. Oh. <laughs> No, I don't even know what it'll be out. Jerry wants to get on the newsstand early. That's All right, Jerry, I'm asking Gene. Please, please, give me a break. Jeez. I have you told Jean? me to jump in. No, it, it doesn't, it truthfully doesn't bother me. I knew what Susan did when I, when I first met her. Someone else told me, actually, when I first met her, I, I knew the man that she went to see on a, a go-see for a commercial, and I went up and asked him about her, and he told me that she was a penthouse pet and everything. And it, quite frankly, it was really, it was exciting for me. I went around, in fact, I went around telling all my friends, I got a date with a penthouse pet, I got a date with a penthouse pet. And uh, I, it was, it was like a living out of fantasy for me, because, you know, I mean, when you're 16 years old, these magazines go around the locker room in high school and things like that, and then all of a sudden you actually have a chance to go out with a centerfold, and uh, it, it was thrilling. And, I, and to this day, I still have not lost that, that thrill. It's, I just think it's uh, very exciting. I'm very proud of her. I'm proud of how beautiful she is, and it doesn't bother me. My, Mike, get me a copy of that magazine. It's uh, right there by the uh, oh. mirror. I bet he knows exactly. In fact, I used to show those pictures to my friends. I used to say, hey, this is who I'm going out with, and she actually asked me to stop because I made it uncomfortable in our private life. Well, here's the, uh, here's the one, the, I guess this happened before your... Uh... Oh, yeah, that's my guy-girl one. This is what? The guy-girl one. That's not my centerfold. Yeah. Now, here, ready to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't show. Here, like that. See this one? Now, what would you, you know, you think he's telling the truth? 
I mean, about his reactions and everything? I have nothing to say. Let <laughs> me show it to a guy. You're right. <laughs> Here, you guys. You too. Look at that. That's one of your chances. <laughs> I mean, how would you feel if it was your girlfriend or your wife? Um, I don't know. I, I, I basically have the same reaction as him, you know, in high school. You're, you, you always dream about going out with this centerfold, so well, I think all, I think all the wife. guys. <laughs> Wait, so? I think all the guys would you know like to have a centerfold as a <laughs> wife too. I mean, how about how about you? Mm, Jesus Christ. Christ! I mean, really? I don't know how he can react like that personally. Um, I don't think it's anything to be proud of. Exploiting yourself to make money. Good. under a controlled situation and you're not like overdoing something a little bit of this a little bit of sugar a little bit of pizza you're not gonna kill yourself you know variety is the spice of life and if you can handle it and you can keep it in its place you know that's fine. sugar pizza you do cooking movies what is that no <laughs> I'm just using that as an analogy but Lisa in your case what Jerry does you're not hurting anybody else but what right. Jerry does how do you know he's not hurting himself with all the uh, more, sexually transmitted I, diseases? I admit that. I have. He's I've, asked I've me created... to be quiet for one moment. Okay? He has hurt himself tremendously. Thank you. He's hurt many people around him, but it wasn't intentionally. He has learned a great deal through this process. Aren't we all here to learn and grow? I've learned and about my life. And we learn through and by our mistakes. I've learned about life. What about your parents? Tremendously humiliated. And I said, <laughs> you know, I'm sure, you know, they don't like hearing the word Jerry because my name is Paul. And, you know, I wrote a lot of crummy things about my folks in that book. And I wrote a lot of things in that book at, that was four years ago when it was a time in my life when I was about 27 years old. And I had a lot of things to just express because I was very bitter, very stubborn, very, I was very clogged up. Um, you know, in this business, it's almost like you want to express more because you get paid to be physical. And I'm a very emotional person. I always was. In fact, I used to play hockey. I used to play, I, used to, I went to acting school in the village and I was studied with the best. And I want to be a, a legit actor. I want to only do what she only done. He's one of I the most talented individuals I've ever met. I sort of, I sort of, thank you. You know, she was going to cry before. She's crying. No, I was. She's crying. It's painful for us to be here. When I hit a plug a book, when I hit to defend what she is, what she done, who she, you know, I, I'm not here to defend it. I mean, what? why are you crying so, Lisa? What's the matter? It's just, it's, a, it's a very, it's a very hard time. The last year has been extremely. You know, we brought up Shh. topics, Lisa. It's just been extremely painful the last year. You know, when you find someone dead, when you have problems with your family, it's hard. She don't have a family, and a lot of it's because of me, too. Take a break. Ask your doctor how to relieve acid indigestion, and he'll probably recommend a liquid antacid. Well, now there's a liquid you can carry in your pocket. It's Tempo. Soft, chewy Tempo tablets with the liquid antacid ingredients doctors recommend. On contact with stomach acid, Tempo gives you the speed of liquids to quickly soothe uncomfortable gas and upset stomach. Tempo relieves indigestion fast with the liquid antacid ingredients doctors recommend. Katerina Witt. They say, oh, Katerina's using her looks. I'm guilty. To be the best, I use everything. The costume, the choreography, the music, and not so crazy, this. Fabergé and Katerina proudly introduce Lady Power Clear Roll-On Antiperspirant. Nothing rolls on this clean and clear. This works for me. It's the part of my look you don't see. New Lady Power Clear, power that won't let you down. Why did their lives fall apart when their series ended? Meet the kids in the Adams Family, Dennis the Menace, Different Strokes, and the Donna Reed Show. Kids we grew up with, next to Robert. Hello! When your spouse is an exhibitionist. Or in star. How, Susan, does your family feel about it? Well, uh, 
My mother, uh, <laughs> this is so unusual. My mother actually was, uh, before I was even an idea, she was uh, studying to be a nun. And she was very Catholic and she was brought up really strict and, you know, by the book as much as a human could live by the book, by her father. And she at first was kind of, well, Susan, I don't like it, you know, and she would give me a little bit, but she wouldn't get into it really heavy and, and you know, I wouldn't push her to go elaborate on it, but she, I could tell she really didn't like it. But then as I talked to her about it behind the scenes and she got to know it from a different point of view, which nobody ever sees unless they're involved in it, she looked at it different and now she's at the point where she brags about it. And my father... Your mom and, actually brags about your career? Well, she doesn't go around to all her friends saying, Oh, guess what? My, my uh, daughter's a pet. She'll, uh, you know, if she has a girlfriend, she'll say, oh, my daughter's going to be on today's show or she's doing another layout or something like that. You know, real softened effect. Well, I think we have a surprise guest. Let me see. Do we? Are, are you there? Hi, Mom. Here's Mom. Barbara. Here's Barbara. This is Mom. Give me a chair, please, somebody. Susan's Mom. Susan didn't know. Here, come sit down. Okay. Remember your son in law, Jean? Good to see you. Now, you don't brag about it, do you? <laughs> All she tells me, she brags to me that she brags. It depends. It troubles you, though. Tell us. Truth? Honestly? Uh, slightly. Well, tell me. Tell us. Uh, I, I hope that it doesn't go too far or too, too much. Yeah, I think she's worried about that I'm going to, you know, end up like Jerry, you know, getting really hot and heavy in it. <laughs> but, but nothing, nothing, not, no, I'm not no, cutting no, down no, your career. Right. It's worse for women, no. I think, yeah. than it is even you know, for men. I don't endorse it. I, I, I'm stuck in the business, and I, you know, I'm pretty much 33. I'm on the way out. I, mean, I, I don't encourage anybody if they want to do it. Right, right. I did it for the wrong reason for myself. Uh-huh. Oh, maybe Come on, Mom. You're the, you're the mom. You're the representative mom on this uh, panel. Tell us the kind of embarrassment you have with your friends. Um, I really don't talk about it to everybody. Very selected friends. Uh, there was a day when I had first heard about it. I walked down the mall and looked around and thought, I am the only mother in this whole entire building who has a daughter who's in the centerfold of Penthouse. And it was kind of exciting and it was kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, I, I was kind of ashamed of it. Do you and your husband ever talk about it? Uh, I was talking to Susan's father the other night. Uh, and told him I was going to be on the Geraldo show, and he said uh, to talk about this subject, and he said, you're not going. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad never talks about it. <laughs> One Thanksgiving, he addressed it to me because he found out like two years later by a fluke, and he uh, brought it up to me. He's like, oh, I don't mind if you pose nude for a painting or something like that, but I thought I taught you right and everything like that. But, you know, that's all he said, and that he never brings it up. Does Susan's father blame Jean at all? No, no, because Susan has uh, started this. Susan's was in the profession before she met Jean. Her centerfold and her uh, that love set that you showed were out before I ever even met her. They shot her. They shot them a couple of years before I even met her. So she was, as I said, I knew she was a penthouse pet when I first met her. So that that's all. It's not incidental. Would you ever watch her movie, movies? I I would say uh, probably not. I didn't look at the uh, centerfold. Someone had sent it to me. So it was not a Who choice. Who sent it to you? I have no idea. Anonymously? Anonymous. Oh, my hate mean, fans probably. How yeah. mean spirited. <laughs> uh, actually, Paige, I'm curious. Yeah, uh, yeah. As you dance, I mean, you get paid more than Jerry does, we know. What's the most you've been offered? <laughs> the most I've been offered or the most I've made? The most I've been offered <clears throat> when I, uh, I was dancing at this one place and um, 
this guy had taken a liking to me and I he had never made himself known to me. He was young, he was very younger than me, very good looking, very rich. And he came up to me, I was dancing, <clears throat> I was in the middle of a set. He came up, he threw on the stage $10,000 in cash and the keys Dang. and the pink slip to a BMW, Dang. brand new, with pen in hand. And said, and this is no lie. And he said, and he said, this, that's what Jay said. <laughs> no, he said, he said, this is yours. This is all yours. I will sign on the dotted line if you come home with me tonight, one night. And my first instinct was to kick him in the face, first of all. I was really insulted. And then I was like, you know, it does flash to your head. Well, if I wasn't married, I mean, he is cute. I could justify this and actually date him and not put a price on anything. But I'm, I'm not for sale. You know, I turned it down and thank you very much. See you later. Take it away. I went home. Jay's like, I'll go home with him for that much, you know? But um, We should go look him up. Yeah, I know, I know. All right, they'll talk about that. I'll take a break now. <laughs> and your spouse is an exhibitionist, I thought. When your spouse is an exhibitionist, that's no porn star. That's my husband, yes. Are all the couples married? All right, now, is everyone married? Now, Susan and Jean, you are married. Mm -hmm. And no children, right? No, no. joke, no, serious. Are you, are you planning on getting married? I mean, uh, having are, children? Yes. Eventually, yeah. And uh, Paige and Jay? Yeah. We are married um, at this stage. We're not planning on having kids, but you never know what can happen. And h how long, uh, Lisa and Jerry, have you been married? Four and a half years. And you courted for what, six months before that? Eight. And you met, I never found out how you met. I was working for a company who sold, I was a Western Regional Sales Manager for Caballero. Actually, I met him before that. Is that I was a, working a porn for a film big, distributor? Yeah, big one. One, one of the, the big biggest, ones. The, the biggest. But before that, I was working for a video company who did both general release and uh, adult release. It's a commodity in video stores. If you're in the industry, you sell both. You know. Anyway, we met through just the business end of it. Was it, it love at first sight? Ex I always said if I would have dropped dead the day I met her or the second I saw her, I would have been happy. I mean, it just was unbelievable. Uh, I think this is generally addressed. I would like to know if any of you ever have the good fortune to become parents, how will you explain your past to your children? I think in our society, it's the same thing as having um, people say, like, if you have tattoos, you know, how are you going to feel when you're older? You guys are, I mean, older, older people are from your generation, and you've lived the same way your entire life. You know what? Well, we will live the same way our entire life. We're not going to turn into our parents or an older generation. We are our generation. Yeah. Our generation will prevail. You know, we'll I could just see you dancing though as those tattoos Hill. begin to stretch Tell out. Their children, what the hell they're what, doing? Our generation's going to be a lot on more honest with That's, our kids. I'm more concerned about that. I wonder that. how many of our parents have like made out and done this, that, and the other in the back of Chevys Isn't and the don't tell us. Isn't the most important thing how you treat other people? What kind of person you are to your children? That's right. John Crawford was a big no. movie star. I, yeah. I just, money. They had, the, the daughter had everything. I just, I just want to ask one she? question. Did you enter your profession before or after marriage? What? Uh, now, Paige, were you married? Uh, oh, Jay got you into the business. Yeah, so. we were going Jay out. Jay suggested it. No, I mean, he didn't like, you know, say, hey. Yeah, I'm not a pimp or anything. <laughs> I mean, I'd be just, dressed a lot better if I was, yeah. but. Uh, well, you suggested like it. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, what do you... They all had on. <laughs> But, um, what are you going to do we at were... school when you have to take your children or your future children to PTA meetings and do show and tell? And my daddy sells insurance you and my mom is a, a porno star. I have a stepdaughter. I was taking a preschool for about three years ago, and people would either come up to me and say, Jerry, gee, I saw you last night. My wife fell asleep, but I stayed up. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, yeah, you be. You, it's, it's, it's like my wife said, it's how you treat people. That's, That's exactly not how it is. condemnation. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Lisa, you said that you're. You broke up with Jerry. What make you go back? Begging, a lot of begging, a lot of I'll never do it again. Please forgive me. Good and promise you, you know. Love, love. The essence That's what of it is. love Crazy and trying love. again. Do we give up so easily? Are, aren't we all human? Don't we all make mistakes, some worse than others? Didn't the Adams Family movie come out about the same time no, Kelly uh, last killed night herself? On when, about the same time what? Kelly killed herself last yeah. fall. Yeah. Like I said, and you the, were the, not asked to be in it. That's right. garbage no, 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 too, right? That's, she wasn't. Oh, you she know wasn't. what? No, no, no. I could give a, a hoot less. You, I've talked about the Adams family enough to last me two lifetimes. But the fact being is, you see, all of this speculation and the BS printed in the tabloids, like the BS you asked me about earlier, came to a head at the same time, and it was a little bit much to take, you know. 
and and it was just a very difficult point in my life I had never felt more pain in my life than when my mother died when I was 16 and it was it's the last year I never thought in a million years whatever happened to me in my lifetime because I'm a very optimistic positive person who always makes things happen in her life that she's wanted and does good for anyone that she can around her so that added to your hurt in other words. oh yeah so and how are you now up until the day five. <laughs> no, a rough day, no, no. Yeah. It's been a rough year. I mean, I'm the kind of person where I'll get through it. I always have, always will. You Can know? I say something? But it's been hard. You know, but this, oh, I mean, being very serious. You know, doing the movies, I was breezing. I just was making films. I had, I had a drug problem while I was in the business. And I was doing drugs, cocaine. That was my aphrodisiac to go home after I made a movie because I think psychologically I wanted to be alone and be private with just one person before I met Lisa. And that's where Coke came to my life. He I write about it openly. He doesn't look at Penthouse and Playboy. He looks at Vogue and Cosmo. Oh, Women Cindy put Crawford, their clothes you know, on. Show me a pair of shoes. And you know... <laughs> but you know, until I met this woman, I mean, she gave me breath. She gave me life. I sometimes was very stupid, like I am with my folks, to not realize really what I had and what always what I have and what is still there. And I feel like I sit on a different show. It's like a back pocket. You know, sometimes you forget what you leave back there, but you leave your important stuff, and you just got to reach a little bit further back, and that's what I have to do. And I'll never leave this woman, even if she leaves me. I mean, that's how I feel. And I, this woman has been everything to my life, and she's very important. She adds society into me where there's a menagerie. Be right back. When your spouse is exhibitionist, that goes I like to ask Jerry. Yeah. I like to ask Jerry. Yeah. 600 porno flicks. You haven't used a condom in neither one. Oh, wow. no, 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 no. That, you haven't seen all 600. No, I used no, a condom no. in one movie. Yeah. One, uh, no, you know, some around these days. You so. know, you make a very interesting point. In the because mouths of uh, babes comes the truth. The, I mean, what? here it is. We, you know, it's, it's stupid. You're right. I mean, Magic Johnson only wishes that he had that one condom back. You know? The truth of the matter is, it, it just doesn't go with the business. And if you say no, like there's a guy in the business right now named Tom Byron who won't work without a condom, you don't get much work. It's very tough. I became a junkie to my own business because you sort of accept defeat and the, and the death-defying challenge. And who knows? It could be the death of me. But like I said, well, I've been and tested. And your wife. And my wife. And it, well, who knows? Right. You know, I've been tested and everything else. And now the business is more tested. And a lot, I had a lot to do with that because four years ago, I, wrote, I was on the Morton Downey Jr. show and I made this whole proposition. Everybody laughed at me in the business. Said, oh, there's no way you can do it. There's a lot more mandatorial testing, not just because of me, but I was an influence. I'm a pest. I am a pest. I, am, I, I admit that. <laughs> but I have more. I have, well, to feel good. Straight. I have to feel better with who I go home <laughs> okay. with. You know? Now, Paige, I noticed. Could you put your back down? You have an interesting thing on your back there. Couldn't we? Uh, one can of the, leave that out uh, of it. One of the audience <laughs> noticed it. Yeah, come on. Yeah, just, uh, how many more are there? I have six. You have six tattoos? Oh, oh yeah. One's covered here, and they're here, here, and I have this one right here. It's my sixth one. Just a little dot. It's a dot. It hurt the most. Oh, and one on my wrist. Hey. Oh, my God. He's a tattoo artist. I'm not covered. It's this like is like, oh, this Sunday is an time. event. Yeah. Three years of the reason, Geraldo, why I was curious, because recently there's been a lot of talk about how ladies like getting tattooed as I'm much sure, that I sure, as men, so I, I was curious to see... Before, I have a you know, what, diamond what she had on her back. <laughs> it's nice. If you knew what it was, you wouldn't think so. <laughs> it it's torn nice. open flesh with leopard skin underneath. Yeah, but it's nice. It could have been done better. Kind of like a flower, I though. I don't think uh, anyone should, you know, knock anyone up here. They all seem to be pretty intelligent, and uh, some of them have some complaints, but, you know, they know what they're into, and there's consequences. I don't think anybody's yeah. knocking us. I think I, we can only say, knock ourselves, well, but you're right. I understand you what you're saying. You say that you've been tested, you know, for AIDS and oh. everything. You, you do, uh, you know, pornos, what, you know, no, uh, you know, condoms or whatever. I mean, I'm sure you've got probably every other thing, you know, other than that. <laughs> I'm the encyclopedia, yeah, yeah. The encyclopedia of sexually transmitted diseases? Thank you. You are. Well, tell us about well, it. Well, that... Well, I'm not knocking you. you know what tell us about into, it. You know? Well, you know, like I said, it's, a, you know, if you get, well, I'm not saying that I do, I'm, I'm just saying if you get herpes these days, it's almost like you, 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 rant, you rave, it's like you get a birthday cake and write herpy birthday on it, you know, with all the diseases. Oh, you know? on that attractive note, we'll you know, take no, a break. But, Thank you. you know, like I said.
when your spouse is an exhibitionist at Perkins. Thank you very much. My question is for Susan. I was wondering, how did you get into the business? And you said you lead an equal life. What other things do you do besides posing? Uh, How'd you get in the business? Is she asking so me? For, yeah. I didn't hear the... How'd you get in the business? Oh, okay, well, initially I was going to college in Illinois, and I wanted to be a model, you know, since I could speak, just about. And I knew, you know, the models had to be really tall, and I thought, well, I'm going to get in this business one way or another. So I thought, well, if I, you know, model nude, you know, I'll be in the business. <laughs> So, and maybe not exactly like how I wanted, but actually I'm happier now because the people in this business, believe it or not, are more scrupulously behaved than people in, in the what legitimate you call modeling. legitimate business. Hi, I'd just like to address a statement to Paige, mm -hmm. who said, you are what you are and you, my generation is what my generation is. I'm speaking for my generation, mm -hmm. which is a lot older than yours. Right, and I have complete respect for that. And thank you for that. But I'd like to say, too, along with your attitude, you have AIDS and herpes and all that goes with it. Right, my generation, a... we did not have that. We right, had long marriages, and we, we had fidelity, and we had loyalty, and we had all those good things. I am, and I, I, have, I, I am so and, loyal to this man. I dance. We're yeah, well, completely monogamous. Okay, okay. Well, we're completely monogamous. When concept. you celebrate your 45th anniversary, like my husband and I are going Any to more do, power to you. I, I will. I will. <laughs> I'd like to address well, this question to the three start, ladies yeah. on the panel, yeah. and that is, start. did you have any religious upbringing when you were younger, and do you practice your religion regularly at the present time? Susan, you mentioned, Barbara, your mom was so religious. Were you also? Uh, well, I used to go to church just because I was a child, and I had to, but at 14, I made a conscious decision in my head that there were too many contradictions in the church, the Catholic church that I went to, that I didn't understand, and... Barbara, does that hurt worst of all? I just hadn't, you know, searched. I, I have, before I get into something, I have to really research it and know this fits exactly me. So I don't know if there's some ideal religion for me, because just because I have Barbara, research. does that bother you? Uh, does it bother me that uh, Susan is... Oh, no, it doesn't. In fact, I'm kind of proud that she uh, can reason and is involved in a religion by choice, not because she's pushed into it. Okay, I don't need to change the topic or anything, but I have a question based to Jerry. Um, how do you have such great stamina like, to do all these movies and everything? Is it like a certain diet or anything? Brain damage. Wait, wait, I mean, how do I stay sound? Stamina. 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 Oh, stamina. stamina. Oh, I sell this. I sell this. I'll, after the show, I, you know, actually, you know something? Believe it or not, believe it or not, it's, it's, it's almost when you get down to the set, just like when I came down to today's show, you get a little bit of the butterflies, and it's almost like do or die. And like I said, I became a craftsman to my, to my work. I became callous. I became a professional to something that, I, that is that's so really secondary. He really becomes somebody else when he does each individual yeah. part. You know, it's almost like Johnny Carson's a quiet guy when you don't oh, know. Oh, I don't you know, know if it's quite like Johnny Carson. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is to Jerry. Hurry. How did you start? Was it because of the drug influence or because you had nothing else to do? You know, so I, I, you I, I was... 10 seconds, quick. Legit acting. I was being harassed by a lot of gay men. I couldn't take it anymore. I was fed up. I was a young youth from Brooklyn, the hot shot. Thought I knew it all and everything else. Didn't want to be harassed before you know what I got. Answer one of the answers. Backstage, show business magazine. Zip! Be right back. Fastest talking porn star in America. Services have been provided by Weston's historic landmark, the Algonquin. Located steps from New York City's theater and shopping districts now offering exciting getaway leisure packages. The Algonquin Hotel. I want to thank all our guests. We just have 20 seconds left. Paige, you want to say something quick? I want to say something really quick Hurry. about uh, generations and things like that. We have the utmost respect for our, our elders and everything else, but as she pointed it out, our younger generation, we have it a lot tougher. We have AIDS. We have other things that kill. We have a government that doesn't back us that much anymore. The American dream is not what it used to be, and we have to do what we have to do to I'll, make it. I want to thank everybody. Quick, Susan, last question. How old were you when you started? Quick. Uh, 18. 18? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. You want to say something, Jerry? Thank you, Lisa. Good luck, Jay. Thanks, Mom. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Barbara. Thank you all. See you next time. Bye bye.